How's it guys? So with all the recent questions about paddle tail fishing on salt fishing South Africa, I've decided to make a video and explain the three uh, methods I personally use here in the Cape on fishing paddle tails. So firstly, today we've got your two weedless hook setups that we don't use them for the weedless. We use them in rocky areas so the paddle tails don't get stuck in the rocks. So we've got the screw on here. And then secondly, we've got the minnow hook that is classically a bass hook that we also like to use around here for the cob. And then we've got the normal lead jigged that's also actually a bass hook in the base, but it's already been fitted with its own half an ounce lead jigged. Okay, so the first set I'm, I'm going to be showing you is going to be this weedless bass hook attached to a third ounce um, jig head and then what we have here is 0.6 millimeter fluorocarbon with a swivel. This um, swivel limits your lead from going too far down your line when fishing in rocky areas and bouncing your jig head along the bottom. So here we have a 6.0 bass hook and what we're going to be doing is to be able to fish a weedless setup on the paddle tail. Most of your hooks are not going to have a deep enough section to um, be able to go through the whole paddle tail. So you're going to be modifying your paddle tail and it's quite simple. What you're going to do, you're going to leave your first centimeter of your head of your paddle tail open. Then where the gills or say two centimeters of your paddle tail would start, I like to insert the knife just to the back and then you'd be cutting down, sliding it down the paddle tail all the way to where your hook would come through the back. So you're going to be cutting it all the way there. Then simply you just take your hook, you're going to be stringing it through the top, you put it through the, the base, through the head, and then it'll come out the back like that. Then you turn your hook around like that, and you just slide it up all the way to the eye of the hook, so it covers the eye. Now you're left with this. This is what I've seen a lot of guys on salt fishing South Africa post. They're not sure what to do with hook now. So it's quite easy. You just measure where the hook would come out the back of the paddle tail. You keep your finger there. You open up the bottom that you've just cut. And you simply just put your hook straight through that line where it would have been. So basically you're turning your paddle tail into what we, we like to call in bass terms a fluke which is a fish with an open belly. So what happens now is when you're fishing, the weeds don't get caught up in your paddle tail. And the same thing happens to the rocks. We like to, you know, fish these in rocky areas instead of weedless areas. So we like to call these rock-free paddle tails. They don't get stuck as easy. And the point of having this big round section on your hook here also helps a lot with giving it a keel like a boat and keeping it upright when swimming because it doesn't have a jig head it kind of tends to do its own a lot more of its own thing in the water and as soon as a cob is going to strike this it's going to hit it through all the way like that exposing your hook completely so you can have a very well exposed hook as soon as the cob takes it and it gives it a very good action in the water giving this little 20 centimeters of fluorocarbon and it's just going to be bouncing working it like that another tip that i could maybe give you guys is to once you've rigged it like this I like to push it back a bit and just tug in the first centimeter of the paddle tail into the top here into the top you can see there now it's going to be even more weedless but as soon as a cob applies its pressure there it should rip straight through and um, set the hook deep in its mouth All right guys so the second set I'm going to be showing you is this screw in um, bob that we have to fish the paddle tails. This is not my favorite method of fishing but I see there are a lot of people that prefer using this way or your tackle shop only supplies this method of um, paddle tail rigs. Um, so what you do is you take the screw, you screw it into the head where the hook would go in of your paddle tail. You'd screw it in all the way until that's disappeared. Then the same, you'd be doing exactly the same, but when cutting this paddle tail, I would cut it all the way from the head, from where the screws are, all the way down the paddle tail to where the hook could come out again. So again, we, we're just doing this to give it a better hookup ratio and make the hook more proud out of the back of the paddle tail. So you could just again measure it out, pop it through the back, 
of your paddle tail, and now you've got this. Again, a very slim, slim, li slim line bait, and as soon as the cob's going to pick it up, it's going to pop through the back like that, and it's going to be exposed for the fish to pick it up really easily once again. So the third way of rigging a paddle tail is just going to be easy, normal, simple. It's going to be your half ounce jig head with your paddle tail. You're going to put your jig head right next to your paddle tail. You're going to mark it with your finger where your hook is going to be exiting the back. And then all you do is you string it down, down the back of the paddle tail to exactly where that mark is that you were holding with your finger. And you can just pop it out the back. And all you do is you slide your paddle tail on and you've got a very presentable paddle tail rig ready. For so another thing some of you guys were asking about is how can you use a 10 rand paddle tail and then cut it up like this. I know it's really bad and you can see after a few cob this is just going to rip out quite easily. And now all you've got left is this worthless 10 rand piece of plastic. So what I like to do is I like to use the blowtorch. And then I just heat up, you can use a nail clipper, you can use a knife, anything, I just heat it up. And then all you do is you slide it down the paddle tail, the heater tip, the bit you've just cut, I'll just slide it down like butter, like that, holding it tight. And then at the tip here, here you go. And so all that's going to do is going to, it's going to melt your paddle tail once again, so it's shut. So now you could just again heat the tip up and you just work this little section here as well. And then you've got a brand new paddle tail, no holes.